The House of Bob is made possible in part by Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash the House of Bob. Last time on House of Annihilation, Lee, Moore, Douglas, and Crate slip into the slimy underwater lake aboard the twin rowboats Predator and Prey. As they scout out the mysterious gears of hatred, an old friend comes to visit and meets an untimely end. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Serpent. I'm Dan, I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beastmaster, with my little buddy Hamlet. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. My name's Trevor, and I'll be playing Moore, the dragonborn warlock who has been trapped in the Tomb of Annihilation. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! And now, you guys, surrounding the floating and dead body of Masterpiece, the young black dragon. You are greeted with a sense of elation. You have conquered one of your enemies down here in the tomb of the nine gods, and you are now a healthy level nine. Hooray! Does he have any loot on him? Yeah, I'm I'm going to be (laughs) hella dark and take some sort of... (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to rip off some sort of dragon trophy. Yeah, Yeah. because fuck this guy. (laughs) Oh, man, he's been harassing you for a while. I'm offended. Personally you just met offended. him. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm a black dragon. Well, it's like, oh, black dragon it's gross. Born. No, yeah. Not... yeah, you keep trying to elevate yourself. This could, this could be your dad. Not... I am a black dragon. You're your yeah. own person. Don't be defined by your heritage. Yeah. Says the snake man. <laughs> yeah. You can't ever fucking <laughs> stop talking by his about heritage. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sees his own mistakes yeah. in you. <laughs> I'm more defined by my desire to wipe out your heritage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Get some real bad jokes in now, that's for sure. Yeah, but we won't. No, nope. <laughs> we won't tread down Buck that path. stops here. Yeah. So instead, we will roll for hit points. Yay. Yay. Spin that wheel. Or roll that D8. Uh, uh, I am a D10. But... You're a D10? Okay, so let's start with Lee, because last time you specifically asked to go last. So we'll see how we do. Okay. Hmm? Six. Nine. Yay. Whoa. I didn't screw you over this time. Yay. Are you catching up to Douglas? Uh, I'm at 89. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Still far off. Well, let's go with our next animalish companion. More. Uh, you know, um, I was going to say you. <laughs> I'm not anybody's <laughs> companion. <laughs> Hamlet. Uh, Crate, what do you at? What's your D? Yeah, I roll a D8 okay. for hit points, and it's going to be... Well, we'll see. <laughs> Have an eight, my friend. Hey! Oh! Sean, you got my birthday present early. Send birthday presents to Jake at P.O. Box <laughs> something. Jake.com. Alex, insert P.O. Box here. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> Jake likes board games. Christina. Actually, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm, D6. <laughs> Douglas. Douglas rolls a D6 as a wizard. Wizard. Oh, Six. I rolled a two, so Boom. you can have that one. And last but not least, more newest to our group, your first level up. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. All right, and you're just a D8, aren't you? It. Yep. What you got? Seven. You can have a seven. Yay. I rolled a four. Good hit point rolls all around. Yeah. Everywhere. We all need of it. us. Desperately. Spell slot. There they spell are. Spell slots. Ooh. Yes. Because I'm a benevolent god. Yay. You guys can replenish your spell slots, but not your lost hit points. Okay. You've collected your trophies from the body. what I get? You, I, I want know, a What you take? You got some tooth. There. You got some tooth. <laughs> I want a tooth. How big are his teeth? Uh, gross big. Gross big? Yeah. Mm. I need something small. I guess I take a well, scale like you could, or something. You could carry it. It's not going to fit in your palm. But I want to wear it, though. You want to wear it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could take like a horn and turn it into a drinking horn. Yeah, that's what I do. That All sounds right. fucking badass. You just saw off this black dragon's horn with like your dagger. <laughs> and then like, it's just just all those doors are like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to snap off a fang myself. All right. You guys take your trophies from the dragon. 
climb back into your slimy rowboats with your robes and armor just dripping with weird ooze. It's fine. Crate, of course, was never in the water the whole time. You're yeah. standing up on top of this cog, mm-hmm. uh, just watching you all flounder. Dry as the day I was born. I gave right. Crate a mm-hmm. big hug. <laughs> I think you, when you were born, you were born in a bath of blood, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the, the, the I cast Tidal of- Wave Inoculus. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a waste of a third level spell. Yeah, that's a fourth level spell. <laughs> all right. So it's worth it. Yeah. No. Before we get too far, we should probably do some heals. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. had my healing spirit still running. Okay, go, so so go ahead and give even yourself Even before your, I'll... Uh, so you got 10 d off of that, or what do you got? I used one already, so we're at 9d6 now. Okay. And I'm going to take all of them. You're going to take all of them? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's the situation with the spirit? I used it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he healed himself. Cuzzled it all up. All right, well, a couple for uh, my good friend, Dougie. Hey. We could still use a rest at some point, though, because... I'm not even back up to half yet. Yeah, short rest. You know, hang out in these boats. Yeah, take a nap. Or do we just want to do that instead? I mean, my short rest was already cast, so I kind of just went with it. Well, yeah. I mean, in, in addition to instead of me spending a bunch of spells, mm-hmm. do we want to do? Sure. That let's, seems like a better idea. Let's do that, idea. and then if we need more healing after that, maybe. Oh, okay. Short rest, everybody. Short Pick your rest. Boat. Predator boat. I'm yeah. going to short rest on top of the thing. Not That's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, so you like let a rope down and everybody climb up? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. As you guys are trying to set up to take your rest on top of this cog, you notice the albino undead dwarves hang from the ceiling, doing their work, repairing a few things from the tower that you guys had come out of with that with that wooden door. A couple more of these dwarves appear. They come through that door. You watch as they wade out into the water and kind of just slosh their way, clumsily swimming, over to the body of Masterpiece. Four or five of them grab different parts of the dragon's body and drag it back towards the tower. They spend a little while trying to cram the body (laughs) through the door, eventually (laughs) splashing it through. (laughs) The door slams shut behind them. Did they take no notice of us? They didn't seem to care that you were there. Hmm. These are the guys that like took Horik's body. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, body disposal is probably a full-time job here. Yeah. Did they leave anything? They left something last time. They didn't leave anything. Hmm. No. But you then hear a voice. Oh, you guys got out here, hey? Oh, it's this guy again. Hey, friend. Yeah, it's just me. Hi. Are you in this water? What? Are you in this water? Oh, yeah, I'm in the water. With us? (laughs) What? You're not in the water. We're, yeah, we're we, in a boat in the water. I know if you were in the water. We went up. To we the went thing. on top of the cog for Ma- rest. Masterpiece oh, okay. was in the water. Did you feel us in the water? Oh, yeah. That mean guy who wanted to kill a bunch of people? Yeah. 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 We killed him. Nice. Nice. Well, we killed him in the water. You didn't notice? Well, yeah, I did. I was just making sure it was, you know, you guys were all copacetic. <laughs> you got us. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, taking a quick break? Yeah, just rest. Come on down. I mean, I was down there. You never said anything when I was in the water. You seem busy. I was busy. <laughs> dying. Busy dying. I almost had you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. oh. That's not super inviting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does that so, mean? So, never going in the water again. You could just join me. You'd be happy. It'd be nice. I mean, I've... Sometimes it's lonely in here. I believe that. Maybe Gully Roll after this is over, but I got I got stuff to do first. What is over? This adventure called life. (laughs) Oh, no, I don't want you once you're dead. (laughs) What do you want us for? (laughs) Company. No, that's fair. I've felt that. I I feel you more than most. Mm, I can tell. Thanks. (laughs) There's lots of loneliness in your mind. Is maybe our rough plan then we have to go back to the control room, switch something over so we can get to the second gear, and then we get into the boat, and then we boat over to the third gear, then go from there? That might work. Thanks, Gully. <laughs> You've always got my back. Douglas raises his hand. Uh, you don't know anything about gears. Douglas, go ahead. You don't know what I know. Not you. It's Gully. Oh. <laughs> I spend lots of time with gears. They're right there. Yeah, he's like always hanging out with these yeah, gears. Couldn't help us before. Well, while we were resting, I was kind of thinking about it. And I think I can make a pass wall through this hole and just get us through and we don't have to do all that other bullshit. <laughs> you can open a hole through the gear? I think so. 
Is this a new spell? This is a new spell that I was just thinking about. <laughs> I just okay. invented it in the last hour. Yeah. Cool. I decided, I was thinking. Sat down with your spell bag, yeah. did some fucking studying, yeah. and you're ready to just cheat your way through the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I make a hole that just goes straight to the boss. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. Sounds good. We slide into it. Tell, tell me about what, what you would do here. The passage appears at a point of my choice that I can see on a wooden, plaster, or stone surface, such as a wall, ceiling, or floor, within range, lasts for the duration, which is one hour. Mm -hmm. You choose the opening's dimension up to five feet wide, eight feet tall, and 20 feet deep. The passage creates no instability in structure surrounding it. When the opening disappears, any creature or object still in the passage created by the spell are safely ejected to the unoccupied stage, which is, that is important to know <laughs> that actually, nearest to the surface on which you cast the spell. Okay. So it sounds like you can make a sweet tunnel. My question for you mm -hmm. would be, where do you want to put it? The gears are made of metal. Whoa. So you could potentially get through into another area through the, the cavern walls. Yeah. You just have to decide where you're going to put it based so, on what else you see around you. Weren't there like there were the stone conduits that led from the wall into the gear, right? Am I remembering that right? That's true. That is true. So we could go into that. You see that you are currently perched on the third gear on the right side of the room. There is a conduit going north from you and south from you. On the second gear and the, the one in the middle, there's an arrow shaped structure to the north of it and a tunnel going off to the south of it. You've got that tower that you guys came through with the spiral staircase in it that the dwarves just came in and out of. And the first gear furthest to the west with one conduit going straight into where you know the control room to be. Completely surrounding everything else is water and then these cave walls that go up to about 10 feet over top of your heads as you're currently standing on the gear. So either we go into one of the conduits that will lead us into the third gear or we check out that arrow room that everybody's so excited about. Well, I think we only wanted to go to the air room because at the time there was not much choice. And now we got a choice. Mm -hmm. Arrow room seems pretty uh, different. The only thing I'd say is that the arrow room, that's one thing. If we go into the third gear, there's two different places we can go from there. But you can't go through into the gear itself. You'd have no, to go into no. the hallway. Yeah, but we go into that hallway and the, both of these are open right now in this configuration. So well, I feel like the gears are just supposed to lead you to like the final passage or something. Mm -hmm. So if we can just skip right to the final passage, then that'd be even better. So I guess we just have to figure out if the third gear is going to line up where we want it to. Well, we don't know where that is, but, yeah. but the third gear right now would lead to either like kind of a little brick layout or the minotaur horns hmm. or tusks or whatever you called it earlier. But we can't get to the stink lines from there, which is would be if we go through the arrow room. I mean, when, they sound really appetizing when you refer to them as stink lines. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm sure they're all great. Okay, yeah, so that's a good point. So presuming that pass walls are going to work, do you guys want to go into the north passageway to the north of the gear or into the passageway to the south side of that gear? Well, I don't think we're committed to that yet, but... South side. <laughs> that's been your choice every single time, so... Can you describe this aerial room to me again? It's another sort of storm structure. It's built to look kind of like a spiral staircase tower. It's just like a brick building, big stone blocks building it, narrow at one side, uh, widens out sort of like an arrowhead would, and then tapers off. It looks like it has an entrance or a piece of conduit that it would attach to the gears. Currently, it's closed off. Is that where we originally came into the gears from? No, you came in through the ceiling of the second gear. You oh. can see a conduit that comes from the ceiling that you would have originally dropped through gotcha. uh, coming down from the gargoyle room. So I feel like the arrow is probably the... F because it does link up with one of the gears, right? So I, I would see that that's the only route that we would like end up taking. Well, that's what we would have taken if there was no other choice. I'm saying that like we're going to be skipping that whole thing if we just use one of the conduits. Oh, every time we seem to go into one of these gears, though, it seems to be like a painful endeavor. Everywhere we go in this dungeon is a painful endeavor. That's, that's why I'm <laughs> trying to skip a middleman, though. <laughs> I just don't, I don't... I think yours is the middleman, is what I'm saying. You yeah. think the arrow is the middleman? Mm-hmm. Sorry, Christina, you think the arrow is a distraction or yeah. do you think it's your goal? I think it's a distraction. I thought it was our goal. Yeah, I think it's our goal too. Jake, what do you think? I don't have any reason to believe that one of them is more the right direction than the other, right? Like we have no idea where we're going. Mm -hmm. The gear gives us two options. The arrow gives us one. So I'm leaning towards the gear. So you're thinking once you're in that gear, if you have two ways to go from it, you've got more areas you can Double scout Double the out. way yeah. to go anyway. I like crates. 
identification of it being a gear with two rooms, more options to explore the dungeon. But I still kind of think that the arrow will will be where we end up going. So I th- I'd say let's check out the gear, but potentially with plans to come back to the arrow. I mean, we'll have we'll to come back to one of them us. anyways, if if it's not a distraction. Yeah, I mean, my, my vote is open up the north conduit so we can get into the gear and either go north or south from there. How long mm-hmm. does your whole opening thing last for? An hour. Okay, so we'll have enough time to get back out because... If we're in there and mm-hmm. we didn't get there through a door, we're just going to be stuck in there. Technically, too, we just have to be inside the hole and it'll push us back out in that hour <laughs> to where I cast the spell, which would be back out here. Weird. Okay. All right. Let's row the boats underneath it then. Well, we're already on top of the third gear. Yeah, we you're... can just oh, walk on top of the condo and the roof down. or something. Yeah. All right. Okay. And that's what you do, Douglas? I say, see you, gully rule. Maybe on the flip side. I'm going to tie a rope off up here. So okay. we can actually get back up to the hole. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I expend a spell slot at fifth level. Douglas stands over top of the brick top of this conduit, riveted together with steel bands and some support structures that go down into the water, pulls out a spell book, reads this bullshit he just came up with half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even actually need the spell book. I'm just making up words. He conjures up some arcane words and, and waves his hands and, and does like a Moses thing. And the stone opens like an aperture of a lens, retracting back as these bricks meld into each other and opening up into a five-foot hallway beneath. I pop down. Crate, you drop down. First thing that you notice in this north hallway It continues north, but when you look south, right before the separation of the hallway and the gear, there is a steel portcullis, these bars that are blocking the path down into the gear. So that's contrary to what we would expect given the configuration we're in, right? Because we're still in configuration three, and it looks open, but something else is going on. But there's a portcullis there. Okay. Well, I mean, we can go north. There's the little brick design room. The rest of you guys drop in? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. After we tie off a thing but yeah all right as you guys all drop in and head north you guys travel uh, about 25 feet forward and you see that there are graven images of rotting corpses decorating the hall the floor here is littered with tarnished coins pieces of armor broken shields axe heads and other bits of scrap metal there's this set of stairs that goes down maybe 20 feet And then the hallway widens to 10 feet wide, and it's just this long haul of discarded mundane items, it seems. Mundane to you. (laughs) What do I see? (laughs) One man's trash? Yep. Yeah. You see trash. There's a couch... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> broken lampshade. You see, you see things, <laughs> stained like, mattress. Just like, just like random objects of like cloth, leather, wood. They're all kind of decayed and rotted. There's some metal that's kind of rusted. It all looks really useless and worthless. But uh, there are no bodies. Like no, there's no, no skeletons. No so it's clear that this is just stuff that the albinos have left behind. I'm just going to poke around a bit. Oh I'm yeah, just this do a might perception. be like what they always are cleaning up and then they just dump it in this room. Well, they don't, this is the dump room. This yeah. is the... The dump room. The destination. I got an 18 perception just to kick it around to see if there is something underneath. Okay. A path, a trail. A hatch. What's your dark vision range? 60 feet. You can see the set of stairs that that comes down to a wide hallway. There's all this rotten and decayed garbage. Lee, you can see at the far end of the hallway, maybe 80, 90 feet from you, there is an archway. And on the other side of that archway, there's a pulsing blue light through that far archway but you cannot make many details out of the hallway between that archway and and your dark vision range okay so there's like a stretch of darkness and then that door can i i'll turn on my flame sword then yeah and your flame sword has like a 30 foot range of light if you have some other way of illuminating the far end of the hallway you might be able to tell more yeah, I can send down a little... It goes 80 feet. Like a candle. Or dim, uh, it would give me dim light for... Dim light to 80 feet? Yeah. You can now see to the end of the hallway, partway between where you are and the far archway, there is a, a hallway that branches to the left. The archway itself is this big yawning archway with a keystone adorned with what looks to be an iron bull skull. The skull itself has this ivory ring bitten in between its teeth. Whoa. 
Um, this might be like a trash compactor. <laughs> I think that's what, what this uh, place is, yeah. What room was this? What symbol was this? It was kind of like, I don't know. I was, so calling, the tusks? It, I was calling it bricks, but yeah. it was... Oh, okay, bricks. Brick wall. Yeah. Might be like construction materials. I don't know. Where they make the bricks. I don't know if anything's really <laughs> like... There's no rhyme or reason to this uh, between the symbol, symbol and like what is happening in the room. Yeah. Okay, so the hallway goes down for a little bit on the left there is a passage and then on the far wall is that bull motif yeah that's right. it, with a blue blinking light you said or uh, through the archway you can see that the next room behind it has this like intense blue pulsing light past the bull past the bull hmm. then the bull is just the skull attached to the like, keystone of the archway gotcha Should oh, we, gosh, well, we kind of have to take a look though this is yeah. the only way we can go yeah i wonder if i can turn invisible <laughs> a classic turbo move. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have that as a spell, whether or not you want to use the slot up. Yeah, because I only have two. Mm. I wish we had masks. Should have killed some dwarves and taken their masks next time. Yeah, we'll put it on the list. Mm-hmm. Do we want to just go investigate this yeah. blue pulsing light? I think so. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one and only I just path. don't want to get crushed, but yeah. Give me marching it- order. No. <laughs> uh, well, Douglas first, right? Yeah. He has the most hit points. Yeah. He's your tank. <laughs> I no. go first. No, yeah. you don't have to go first. It's fine. I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not fucking scared of this blue light. <laughs> More will follow looking like Douglas. <laughs> Douglas, you step off of the stairs onto the flat of the hallway, and you guys watch as instantly. Oh no. <laughs> Everything that Douglas has on his person mm. that is not magical instantly begins to corrode, decay, and rot. Oh. Good thing a lot of my stuff is magical. Just go ahead, delete your clothes, <laughs> your robe, oh, any non magical weapons, any non magical armor, anything that's not magical is gone. Okay. I, I don't I don't follow <laughs> when I see this. I'm like, well, yeah. That's- yeah, that's not gonna work for me just instantly rots off into a pile at your feet. I mean, we could take this stuff off and get in there. Cool. Wish I had a magic loincloth right about now. <laughs> oh. Gross. Water skin. I don't want you to see my bits. I don't want to see your face. I want to hear this list. <laughs> oh, how's my spellbook not magical? Your spellbook. Oh. your spellbook is magical. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, what's his name? Shield. <laughs> Cranston's <laughs> shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disappears. What's his name? Backpack acid vial. <laughs> cool. Good amount of stuff. So what are you left with? I still have my wand of the war mage, wand of web, my ring of jumping, my headband of intellect, my amulet of health, and my marvelous pigment. So I start painting a shirt. <laughs> Body painting. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, that rave. you've got two wands. you got one wand in either hand. Yeah. You're wearing a ring. You've got an amulet. You've got a headband. Yeah. No mm. pockets. Gills are, <laughs> gills are showing. Yeah, gills are showing. I don't I know how something. you're going to carry these pigments because you got no belt or well, anything. Well, I already started painting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just painting a belt on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Losery belt. <laughs> Loincloth. As long as I look like I'm wearing clothes, that's what matters. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> I can see everything. That's weird. Looks like cheap body paint until you cast an illusory spell on it. But it was uh, magic. But I, I like that. I like that approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I walk back and I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before I walk back to retcon a little bit, I do want to do like a perception check to see if there's like <laughs> sure anything on the other end. I, s- I send my yeah, candle I mean, you over. Could, you yeah, could, I mean, you could walk down. Yeah, there that's true. I want. guess I don't have to worry anymore. Yeah, if you're there, you kind yeah, of well. lost all your stuff. Mm. Uh, so you all walk, my crap. You walk down. To the end of the hallway. <laughs> My armor class went down. <laughs> <laughs> what armor class? Uh, First, you pass this hallway that extends off to the left, and you see that it is a set of stairs that extend straight down, maybe 70 feet into the darkness. Ahead of you, this archway, again, the keystone is this, this iron bull skull with an ivory ring clamped into its teeth. Beyond that arch, you can now see into the far room. Hot wind tinged with the smell of burning oil blows around this 40 foot diameter vertical shaft there are these stone balconies protruding from the walls on opposite sides with the west balcony you can see a little bit higher than the one on your side 
two thick chains rattle in the gulf between the balconies. One ascending up into the, the ceiling, 200 feet above, disappearing into a cloudy vortex lit by arcs of purple lightning. The other one wraps around an enormous metal gear floating 100 feet below you. Another 100 feet below the gear, a second vortex rages. Mm. Lightning and light pulsing, and as the, these chains are whipping up and down, creating this huge kinetic pulley that just whips wildly. And here you are just standing at this arch like, whoa. Whoa. Cool. Wish we had some garbage to throw in there, see what it does. We have lots of garbage <laughs> behind you. <laughs> Once you take it past, oh, though, yeah, it's that's true. poof. We don't know. Maybe something's magical in here. You can cast Detect Magic. Yeah. Do we need to cast Detect Magic, and can we just walk through the hall, and if it's disappears, it's well, not magic. Well, that would take a long time. <laughs> uh, that's fair. Well, if you wanted, I mean, if you wanted to detect anything other ma- like other than what you already have yeah. that's magical, you'd have to cast Detect Magic. Yeah. Well, he's saying to do it in a very piecemeal way. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, it doesn't use spell slots. I'm very conscious of spell mm. slots now. Detect Magic might be a cantrip, though. Oh, okay. First level, I think. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't have it. Sure you have a lot of first yeah. levels. Don't have no. it? No. What? I, at least I don't have it prepared or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right. Lee's going to start getting naked. Just taking off all your non-magical stuff? Yeah. You guys notice that Lee is almost completely covered in hair now. You like and, that? And goat fur. No. You like that? I don't. You want to touch it? It's real soft. What do you have left on your body? If you're <laughs> taking off all your non-magical <laughs> stuff, what are you keeping? And how are you carrying it? Okay, I'm going to keep my... Hmm. There's no point taking my longbow because my longbow is magical. My arrows are not. Oh, sure. Which okay. sucks. Um, and you haven't been shooting things anyway. Not really. So I'll take my flame tongue longsword, my staff of striking. That's all the weapons I'm going to take. I'll keep my helm of telepathy. And that's really all I have for... Bracers of archery? Yeah, bracers... Well... Yeah, yeah that's, I, it that's, doesn't matter. I'll just leave them on. Doesn't that's matter. what makes your strength 23 or whatever. Right. Yeah. So you'll leave them on. <laughs> yeah. Leave those on. Those yeah. are important. And that's about it. Before you get too far, there is one thing I could maybe try, hmm. which is just dispel magic, but they're probably super high level effects that I, would I think won't so. be able to touch. Yeah, but I mean... Maybe just no one's done it. <laughs> they always just assume right. it, it, it only suppresses it, I think, for a while. Yeah, but, you can try uh, it. No, try walking down with. I'll try things. walking down with a what sock you, on or what something. What would you cast to spell magic on? Would you cast it on a something you see in the room? Would you cast it on the floor? What would you cast it? On? It says you can choose a magical effect in the area. So the effect being the the rotting or whatever. So maybe it is. your yeah. stuff would just be a little damaged or whatever by the time you get over. Mm-hmm. And how long does it last for? Actually, it's, it doesn't suppress it. It is. It's instantaneous. One magical effect within the area ends. So that'd probably be DM ruling. I should have counterspelled this spell then. <laughs> if you could do that. <laughs> it instantly ends any spell of third level or lower. If it's higher than that, I need to make a check on it. Crate, uh, if you're going to cast a spell magic, go ahead and roll a caster level check. Okay, Crate will attempt to dispel the rotting effect. He's going to cast Guidance on himself first. Ooh. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. What? <laughs> Holy shit. How many natural 20s is, that a, is it in a row? That's now for three you, in a row. Three in three. a row. Oh, oh my the gosh. same die. <laughs> Keep that I, I die think you've, forever. You've entered a new phase in your life, Jake. You're going to just roll 20s for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, and you ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why did you say okay, well, if, So for, 25. You know what, Jake? For... Given your history, <laughs> given given your luck with the dice, given that this is the third natural 20 you've rolled in a row in these past two sessions, and given that that is <laughs> higher than the possible DC for a ninth level spell, I will allow you to dispel this effect. And as you cast that on Yay. the hallway, the ivory ring and the bull's teeth disintegrates. Yeah, that's what it was. I'm going to go back into the other room full of rotting stuff and just put it, <laughs> find a couple of things to wear. Have, everything, uh, everything is completely ruined. Aww. I guess I'll put my clothes back on. <laughs> I apparently have a spare set of vestments you can have. What? <laughs> Thank you. For some reason, Crate, a little big. the snake man was carrying extra humanoid clothing. Yeah, for, Just in case. Like if I pick up a slave along the way or whatever. 
Uh oh. <laughs> what does this mean if I take these clothes? Yeah. Can, you de- can you describe the contract? Can you describe these vestments? Yeah, it's just like an iron collar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm thank you. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna free range this shit. Yes. Go in birthday suit. Yeah, so like it's not commando. <laughs> it's like ultra. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you guys. I'd rather do that. Do you want me to carry some stuff for you? I you- have pockets. <laughs> I mean, I've got everything I need. I can wear the stuff that is magical, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> You're wearing like the one thing is that the one stuff. thing is carrying your spell book and both wands. That's true. I mean, I can carry both wands in my hand. But you're going to tuck your spell book under your elbow? In my butt. Can we butt. just get some like tape so you can like <laughs> tape a wand to your leg or something? I give you a piece of rope so you can tie a... Sure, thank you. Yeah. I tie it, I tie the book to my back and a wand to my leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send your fan art to <laughs> podcast at gmail.com. I tie a knot. Yeah, between like some rope and like a spare water skin or something, we can probably fashion just a little satchel for you. <laughs> there you go. Well, you can make maybe make like a banana hammock out of the, <laughs> the water out of the water skin. skin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't need that much water because I can just keep making water. That's not a big deal. There you go. There we go. So I just wear a bunch of water <laughs> skins. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is gonna be the probably the first time for the rest of the if this is a, a, like an animated TV show for the rest of the time there would just be like conveniently oh, like did I lose my <laughs> something like in front of your fish crotch my masterpiece trophy too your masterpiece trophy is gone oh fucking asshole <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, you took the guy. body away he, he gets the yeah. last laugh I guess I got his fan actually no dragons are magical you still have that one. yay yeah. You shove it in a water stand. I put it in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like that episode of Blackadder where he wears the, the cod piece. Yeah, exactly. It's Lo- like a cod piece. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Which way are you pointing it? Up or down? <laughs> well, it is it up. Oh, yeah. it's curly, isn't it's it? Curly. Yeah. It's curly. <laughs> it's like a duck dick, you know? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, oh. I get to the other side of the hallway <laughs> before this stall so, yeah, comes you back. Guys, you guys have two ways to go. You can go forward into this lightning chain room. That sounds great. Or you can go to the left down this very steep stairway into darkness. 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 <laughs> well, I send, we I send a, it out. my torch down to see. Okay. You send your torch down the stairs. As the candle reaches to the bottom of these stairs, it extends down to the bottom of the stairs. You can see at the base, um, it is illuminating this green, undulating and flowing mist in the level below you. I don't like mists. It's just water. No, it's not always just water. (laughs) That's why I don't like it. Green mist or lightning, what are we thinking? Hmm. (laughs) The age-old question. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if it's acid, at the very least, I have a resistance to it. (laughs) So that's something. (laughs) But lightning is so exciting, you know? Well, after Lightning seems to be, like, doing something. I'd like to know what it's actually what it, what its function is. It definitely true. feels like an important room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. Maybe it's let's bold. scope that out first. Yeah, let's just at least. Gas put... seems like something that would kill us. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, all of it seems like something that would kill us. Yeah, yeah. but gas sucks. But yeah, I, I agree. Lightning does, I guess, seem like it at the very least it healed that one monster. <laughs> so maybe it does something for the whole dungeon. Yeah, it could be, you know, the power source that's powering this whole thing for it's, all we know. It's the smoke monster from the Lost Island. Well, maybe... Sounds a bunch of bullshit. Yes. <laughs> Here's my theory. As you walk down, everything non-magical breaks down. <laughs> so everything that's magical gets tossed in that lightning thing, and then it destroys magical stuff. Oh, maybe, yeah. Oh, no. So it's like, a, it's like the ultimate compactor. It just disintegrates everything. I so, don't want to lose my magical stuff. Let's hope that doesn't stuff. happen, yeah. Before we go into the lightning room... Great's going to cast a quick spell on himself, which is just Death Ward. Because he's not feeling like dying today. I'm going to cast something on Douglas. Oh, thank you. Summon Snaring Strike. Oh. No. <laughs> <Alarm>. <laughs> no, you're going to get bark skin for an hour. Whoa, how do I put somebody else's buffs on me? You just uh, have to remember what it does. Well, your AC 16. Cool, thank you. No, there's a condition oh, thing. What? That's got to be I a good one AC on here. 16. Isn't yours 15? No, mine's... Well, I have to cast something Major for Major armor lasts for eight hours. Just cast it on yourself. Oh, okay. Doesn't take up a slot. That's one of your abilities. Beautiful. I do that. I'm good. I'm at Thank 15. Thank you, Lee. Good. Yeah. 
Okay. So mm. looking again through this archway, you can see that there is a little balcony on your side. It's probably 10 feet by 10 feet, kind of extends into a little point. This chain is up on one side, down on one side, wildly whipping and spinning, going quite fast, straight across and 15 feet up is another balcony going up into another hallway that you can't quite see into on the other side of this chasm. The chasm goes 100 feet straight down, 200 feet straight up. And as you guys are there gazing, looking up and looking down, trying to figure out what it is that you're going to do, a rip in the very air opens into the vortex high above you, and nine cube-shaped creatures with wings and short bows fly through. Nine cubes. Uh Uh-oh. They are quickly followed by a large crystal decahedron that holds a weird starfish-shaped creature. Uh oh! Roll initiative. What the hell? These are the guys. That's we killed, confusing. I think these are definitely not from around here. I think they are from around here. <laughs> there we go. Natural one on initiative. <laughs> <laughs> More. Twenty-one. Twenty-five for Lee. Douglas. Fourteen. Okay, it is Lee's turn. You are the first to react to these strange metal cube creatures and a decahedron, like a crystal decahedron with this star-shaped creature inside it, uh, the quickest to react. What do you do? I'm going to aim for the big one, because you guys all have area of effect kind of attacks, and I really don't. Mm -hmm. So I figure I might as well aim for the big guy. Sure. Um, I'm going to use my my bow, and we'll see how this goes. 19 to hit. 19 hits. Woo! 18 damage. Okay. And I'll fire again. 17 to hit. That hits. 14. Your arrows pierce the crystal container around it, and the second arrow drives straight through into that star-shaped creature, and it instantly disintegrates into dust, leaving behind just this moat cloud that immediately gets swept up into the vortex. Oh. As it begins to disintegrate, you hear this like... And then it's gone. I'm so confused. (laughs) (laughs) More. You're next. What do you do? Eldritch Blast. Okay. Got some cube-shaped creatures flying straight at you. Go ahead and shoot them. Two of them. Okay. Two blasts. 26 and a 19. Both hit. Nice. And I believe my new ability with my Eldritch Blast does something. It slows them down. It slows them down. Lance of Lethargy. Lance of Lethargy. Four damage and 13 damage. Two of your blasts hit one of these cube-shaped creatures and it and then continues to draw back on its short bow, getting ready to shoot an arrow at you. And then it does because it's its turn. Uh, <laughs> this is... Ooh, jeez. It makes four shots as it just goes ka-chim, 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 like Wow, a that's a crazy fire. short bow. Oh my god. That. That's uh, with, even with slow on it? The jerk. Movement speed is slow, but not his attack. 21 to hit. 21 hits. 19 to hit. 19 hits. Natural one. Misses. And 13. Misses. You will take eight damage from the first arrow, three damage from the second arrow, and I've got eight more cubes to go. Oh my goodness. Two shoot at Lee. 23 hit you? Yep. And another 23, so that's going to be two arrows. Five and four damage. Two shoot at crate. 22 to hit. Sure. Hmm. And a 12 to hit. No. Okay. So only hit with one arrow. Crate takes five points of damage. Douglas. Mm-hmm. 19 and a 22. Yep. And a 16. 16 is exactly. Okay. So you'll get hit with three arrows. Eight damage, four damage, six damage. And then two more and more. Does an 18 hit you? 18 hits me. Okay, so you're going to take two arrows, three arrows this time. You will take... Eight plus six is 14 points of piercing damage. These cubes are just now swirling around the chains like a flock of birds swooping around, repeatedly rapid-firing arrows at you guys. It is now Douglas's turn. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast Burning Hands at these guys. 
All right, you will catch seven of them. Wow. Yeah, so I think you have to roll a dexterity saving throw. What's my number? 16. Okay. Two fails. Four fails. Six fails. Seven fails. Wow. Seven fail. okay. Wow. All right, let's roll this. I also I am casting this at a second level, so I add an extra 1d6 to this roll. 20. 20 damage to each of them? Yes. Holy smokes. So you managed to incinerate the one that Moore had previously blasted, and the oh. rest of them Four. look like they're in pretty bad condition. Two of the cube creatures are still unharmed. It is now Crate's turn. Okay. How far away are they? The whole room itself is like 40 feet in diameter. Yeah. So as they're swirling around, eventually a couple of them are going to come fairly close to you. Okay. All right. I think we'll start off simple. I wait for a time when two of them are right beside each other and I'll hold the dead. Okay. DC 16 now. Both succeed. Oh, okay. Sorry. I stopped then. (laughs) (laughs) I might have a minor action or bonus action. Let's get our old friend's spiritual weapon out. He's been doing well for me today. (laughs) This snake appears out of nowhere, swirling around the vortex, attempting to catch the cube creatures as they fly past. He definitely needs a name. He's been working overtime. That would be 12. Miss. It is now Lee's turn. Okay. Gotta fire two arrows at the ones that are damaged. Mm Mm-hmm. 14. Miss. 25. 25 hits. 14 damage. Okay, completely destroys it. It is now Moore's turn. Just a quick recap on how many of the cubes there are. There are five damaged ones, two good ones. I would like to aim for the two good ones okay. with an Eldritch Blast. One on each? One on each. 14. Uh, to hit with AC? No. No. 23. 23 hits. Yes. 11 damage and is slowed. Oh, right. Okay. It is now their turn. There's still seven of them are remaining. So they're going to just gonna... uh, Actually, sorry. That yeah. was that was an, an attack action. I right. still have a move action or a bonus action. Okay. Just a quick recap. There's in front of us, they're swirling around in this like cave space. In this like huge cylinder room. Huge cylinder room. And across, directly across from us is another. And 15 feet up. And 15 feet up. Not two, it's just, just one. one. It's just 15 one. feet above you on the other side of the cylinder. How far away is it, roughly? 15 feet up, 40 feet across. We usually just go with whatever the bigger number of those two is, so 40 feet. I would like to cast, as a bonus action, Far Step. Ooh. Concentration spell, I just got it. Packed slot for a minute. I can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space that I can see on each of my turns until the spell ends. Hi. Uh, you can use a bonus action to teleport this way again. And so it's a bonus action, so I can bonus action up there and then move again. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, and what's it called again? Far Step. Far Step. Okay. What's it like up there? What you see further into that hallway is a very narrow crawl space lodged into the wall, kind of like what you saw in the Juggernaut room. Narrow little crawl space. It's pretty dark. You look through... And you can see that it goes maybe 20, 25 feet and opens up into another space. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just going to duck out of sight so that they can't quite just get lean, me. Leaning low? Yeah, okay. leaning low. Sounds good. It is the cube creature's turn, so they are going to do some blasting with arrows. Uh, a couple of them fly up a little bit higher and do shoot at you more. Sorry, bud. Well, that's Three-dimensional right. movement and all. One arrow hits you from the first cube is four points of damage. Second Ooh. cube, does a 15 hit you? 15's the AC. Okay, so two arrows, three arrows. You will take 18 points of piercing damage from the second cube shooting you. And then two will go after Lee. Does a 19 hit you, Lee? Yep. Five points of damage. Second cube guy... Does a 16 hit you, Lee? Yep. Two arrows. That is 10 points of damage from two more arrows hitting you. Crate. Does a 14 hit you? Nope. Okay. Second cube guy. One crit and a 19. 
Yeah, it just hits. Okay. And then an 18. Nope. Okay. 16 points of piercing damage altogether <laughs> as two arrows strike you. And Douglas, last but not least. <laughs> oh, I was hoping I was being forgotten this time. <laughs> <laughs> an 11 misses you, correct? Yes. Okay. And a 12 misses you? Yep. Okay. Thank and... you, Lee. <laughs> You're welcome. They were distracted by the horn. <laughs> Just waving it around. My horn or your horn? <laughs> I don't think I've started growing uh, horns yet. I thought you did. One of them will hit you for eight points of damage. Okay. That is their turn. It is now Douglas's opportunity uh, to go. How close are they together at this point? They're kind of traveling in pairs. Mm -hmm. And at any given time, four of them are on the far side up above you. They're traveling in like a circular shape on a slant going up to where more is coming mm -hmm. back down towards you. Just circling around very rhythmically, very methodically following the path exactly every okay. time. Okay. They're very predictable, you think? Yeah. So I think I'm going to cast Cloud of Daggers, which I've been realizing I've been using wrong <laughs> this whole time. Yeah. Because it actually is, I put it in a space and then it's five feet around it, not just on on the target. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it could have so been So it's like helpful. a ring instead. It, it mm -hmm. would have been much more helpful to use it this way. I think it's just a five foot cube. In a five foot cube on each side. Yeah, so five by five. Yeah, by oh, five, on by each five. side. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it is like that. Yeah. So I'm going to put it like where I always see them kind of arching up. Sure. Just to where they are currently, or like a set currently is. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so these daggers are swirling around. Will they take damage on my turn or on your turn? On their turn, yeah. Okay. Crate, your turn. Uh, I wait again for well, yeah, when they hit that peak, and there's two of them. Well, there's always two of them side by side. They're yeah. going little pairs. Easy. Perfect targets for Toll the Dead, please. DC 16. One passes. Okay. Just nine necrotic damage. Okay, you managed to uh, crack one of the ones that had been hurt already. Okay, then I'll send the spiritual weapon over to try to finish it off. Sure. Go sneaky. 26. That hits. Eight damage. Your snake clamps down onto it, and this creature disintegrates into dust. It is Lee's turn. So it's a pretty small platform that we're kind of fighting yeah, on, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, it, it kind of comes to a point ahead of you, but and so it's like 10 feet out from the archway and then 10 feet wide, and then it gets narrower as it comes out. Okay. Nowhere to hide. All right, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Okay. Firing some arrows. Yeah. First arrow, 29. Second arrow, 22. I'll say yes to both of those. <laughs> cool. <laughs> 11 damage on one. Dead. 19 damage on the second. You managed to hit two that were traveling in pairs perfectly, and they both disintegrate. Pew, pew. You can see now that the other cube creatures, as some of them are following, they were changing their group sizes. If there's uh, an even number of them, they are in even groups. If there's an odd number of them, they go to singular groups. They keep shifting around. So now there are four left, and they are traveling singular one each by themselves. I think this is like magnetized or something. I don't know. They're weird little guys. Mm -hmm. It is Moore's turn. Moore is going to Eldritch Blast. Two of them. Nice. Nat 20. Wow. Wow. And then I'll roll another attack. This session, you guys. We are the chosen ones. 16. You crit on one and hit the other. 25 damage to Dead. the crit. Good golly. And then oh my gosh. another max damage is 13. Dead. Wow. <laughs> Good job. As a bonus action, could I just teleport back down to the sure. platform that the other guys <laughs> no, are just showing off? I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> now just two of them are circling around. One of them slams into this cloud of daggers. Ten. As it slams into the cloud of daggers, it bursts into dust, disintegrating in place. The other one adjusts its flight trajectory to just miss the cloud <laughs> and then shoots I didn't all four of its arrows smart. at Douglas. What the fuck? <laughs> 23 to hit. Yeah. And 14 to hit. No. One arrow hits you for eight points of damage. No. It is your turn, Douglas. Do you have to roll concentration for the Cloud of Daggers? Does uh, it matter? You're going to kill it anyway this turn, aren't it you? It is a concentration spell. Yeah. I don't think I've, you've ever made me do that. <laughs> roll your spellcasting ability modifier and try and get 10. You have to roll 10 minimum. Yay. Yeah, you're good. Your spell is still up. Okay. I'm just gonna fucking hit this thing with frostbite. 
So it has to roll constitution saving throw. 16 is the target. Fails dead. Yay. And burst into dust. The rent in the air above you guys closes back up. And these creatures are disintegrated. That was weird. Yeah. So I have some questions. <laughs> Um, you can't ask them when they're done now. Yeah, no, for, I'm not, for I'm not <laughs> for the DM. <laughs> yeah. Existential. Uh, when I fired my arrow in, was there any effect on the arrow? Uh, what do you mean? They're flying around like the lightning storm, right? Yeah, no, Basically. it's more like just electricity is flashing around in here okay. than necessarily a storm. I just want to know if they are like disintegrating on their flight path or something like that. I would say no, it wasn't affecting their flight path. Okay. Yeah. All right. No. Uh, Maybe that goes my theory of it being like a magic item destroyer or something like that. But do we want to try getting up to that other level? Yeah. Yeah, I don't totally know how. But Actually, can I, mean, I look down? Is there another platform below us? There's no other platforms below you. There's just this chain that like <laughs> goes up on one side, down on the other. While I still have a minute, yeah, I'd like to teleport back up to that platform oh, yeah. and yeah. just throw a rope down if I'd be able to throw a rope 40 feet. I could lend you my bow and arrow. Well, you, you, can, you like, teleport up there, arrow down. tie the rope to something, and then grab the other end of the rope and teleport down. <laughs> I don't yeah, think that's how I it works. That. <laughs> <laughs> With everybody working together, you can sling a rope across. You'll, you you will find a way. So Sweet. you guys managed to create a, a rope bridge uh, mm. between these two. It just will take a steady hand and a good climb check to get across. Oh, no. <laughs> Those are two things I can don't have. Can you give us that inspiration or whatever it was? Not inspiration, but... Yeah, you know, the thing where we get a D4 on our checks? Or, yeah, but I want you to say the name of the spell. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say if you tell me. <laughs> so everybody else gets D4. Hooray. No. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll I shoot you with an arrow as you climb up. <laughs> I can cast guidance on each and every one of you because you are my children. Guidance. Metaphorically. Are you, so you going to be brood. sad when we're dead? I mean, we're all going to die eventually. No, but I mean, like, from his thing. <laughs> is Crate going to be sad when, when we're everybody dead. else is dead? Yeah, because you know, he just called us his children, so... Crate's Kray, not going to be Does sad. Does he have actually be... affection for us is basically what I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think him. that Crate will be that happy for doing. us because Crate's ultimate goal for us will have been accomplished. Guess what, guys? Well, I'm, no. I'm trying to RP in this game with the character <laughs> instead of you guys telling me how he feels. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like you're talking that happen. More is talking about it that way as well, too. More is like, well, I don't know. I think that Crate wants us all to die so that for if Crate calls us as babies, then someone won't be sad. He'll be happy for us. I don't know. He doesn't want to die, though, himself. He doesn't think he's going to. I'm right here, guys. I know. Well, I, was literally sidebar, trying sidebar. To talk, I was literally trying to talk to you, but... <laughs> we stepped in the way. Like, yeah. No, you talk to us. Okay. So if you guys can let him know that I'm asking him a question. <laughs> that great. Great. Someone wants Stand to talk to you. <laughs> so Crate's on the other side. He climbed across a while ago. <laughs> okay. I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> I just started climbing across. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Christina. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Crate's made it pretty clear before that he wants you alive long enough to suffer at the hands of Dendar the Night I Serpent. I understand that we've been together long enough and that, I don't know, maybe you've actually <laughs> care about us a little bit. You're useful tools. Some of the best thralls I've ever had. Okay. <laughs> I just start climbing. <laughs> That's about as good as it could get. Yeah, I mean, that was better than I expected. <laughs> it was kind of a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Douglas attempts to climb across the rope ladder. What do we need again? Bridge. You need to roll an athletics check. Oh, I'm going to own this shit. Oh, yeah. I'm all strength, Great. baby. Ooh, Ooh, Douglas. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone got feather fall? <laughs> no, I do not. Douglas, are you going to climb the rope? Nah, man. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> After he says that we're useful thralls, I just put one hand on my hip and the other one like Superman style up in the air and <laughs> jump up. <laughs> Whoa. My planet needs me. casting jump? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know how far you can jump with that or anything? Uh, 50 feet. <laughs> so it triples the jump distance. Yeah. Which is your height. Okay, and then I sheepishly just take the rope across. Like, yes. Okay, so the rope gives you a little bit of assistance anyway, so you go ahead and roll in athletics with advantage. Okay. And his guidance spell, I guess, since he was nice enough to cast it on his thralls. That's yep. much better. Fifteen. Douglas makes it across the gap. 
who is going to go next. I thought I was going to be so cool jumping over. <laughs> you guys got to go first so I can cast guidance on you. Lee does her thing and climbs a ladder. No, not a ladder. Well, whatever. Cross a rope, rope ladder. Rope. Oh, this is with advantage, right? Yeah. 29. You like walk across the like, <laughs> <tightrope. Right>. Sweet. <laughs> so cool. I'm like... <sighs> I'm doing my Superman pose, even though it doesn't make it's sense. It's a very legless move. <laughs> <laughs> like, the elf, elf plus goat gives you really good balance. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can just climb anywhere yeah, now. Yeah, I want bonuses for being goat. Uh, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> you got weird Dude, eyes. Eat the can. Uh, Do I have better like peripheral vision because no. of my eyes? No, they no. just look weird. Why would I give you anything? <laughs> <laughs> Because you're a benevolent DM? <laughs> uh, 18 for crate to climb across. Okay, you're good. Um, before you guys uh, take a look through this crawlway, does anybody want to uh, roll, if you have proficiency, roll an arcana check about this room? I got arcana. Okay. Finally. <laughs> no, oh my God. My <laughs> rolls have been fucking sucking. 11. <laughs> it's obvious to you that this is some sort of planar vortex. These are incredibly destructive magical phenomena. You know that if you were to fall into that, there'd basically be no way to, way to survive. Mm. You're not sure where it possibly connects to, though. Is there anybody else that's proficient in Arcana? Mm, I didn't roll any better. Okay, cool. It's bad, you guys. Vortexes equals bad. I mean, yeah, it, it was described bad. Does yeah. it sound like a good vortex? <laughs> yeah. We know that Sarah was like messing around with planar portals and like catch because that's how he captured that uh, genie and whatnot. Right. So, yeah, this is just like his playroom. You know, just like the planar <laughs> portal terror that you have in your house. You know, like you have. Yeah. I have one. What's down this hallway? <laughs> Okay. That's not so a nice guys, thing to uh, say about your dog. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> My dog is a planar portal. <laughs> My you other guys, dog's a planar portal. You guys uh, duck down and proceed through this little crawlway, going inch by inch until finally you come through into another dark chamber. Inside this room, there is a massive bronze apparatus centered on a hinged arm. Slowly rotating within the arm, is a 10 foot diameter globe decorated by a topographic map of landforms and oceans. There are concentric rings of brass constraining the device, all rotating and bearing their own lesser spheres. One of those spheres have sharp points and appears sun-like. There are carvings of tall, headless humanoids decorating the walls of this room. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel in every room. Yeah. I, go into. <laughs> I don't know what to think. Well, this is, it's like a, I don't know how to pronounce it, an ore? 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 O R R E Y? It's like a big globe with like, uh, yeah, like the lunar spheres like rotating around it. Right. Mm. Yeah. Like that a, probably doesn't mean anything to me. Constellation type. One yeah, of those uh, ones. Oh, like a mobile. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And tall headless humanoids on the walls. And that's it. That is what you see. What do the humanoids look like they're made out of? They're just painted and carved onto the wall. Okay. Carbon, probably. <laughs> like all things. Uh, should we go in? Yeah. Let's go investigate this cool mobile. Yeah. Let's do a perception check. Yeah. Yeah. For traps and stuff. Okay. 22 perception. You can tell that on the south wall of this room that there is one of those secret doors. Oh. Embedded into the wall. So good at finding doors. You're doing an okay job. That seems like a good viable option. Like, I'd rather stay out of the main rooms and stick to the back rooms until we kind of get to our destination. Yeah. I'm just, I want, I'm curious about the orrery on the way, but yeah, yeah we let's can, head to uh, the secret door. As you guys start heading across to the secret door. Can I go around? You guys are going around, but it's okay. it kind of takes up so much space in this room that at some point start getting a little bit closer to it. And as you come within that five foot distance of it, you just can't get quite pressed up against the wall anymore. The apparatus suddenly swings around, its rings rotating out of the way as the surface of the globe peels back to reveal a dark, hollow interior. Inside this cavity is a padded bronze chair with levers built into its armrests. Dibs. <laughs> you guys want to go on a planar adventure? This sounds awesome. That sounds better than what we're doing. It looks like a spaceship. Yeah. 
it sounds like not solving our problem though yeah 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 <laughs> what's the point of living if you're not gonna have a little fun <laughs> if you don't <laughs> maybe you don't mess die. with some planes on your way out <laughs> I doubt this thing is going anywhere. Should we check out the secret door first? Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. how about I sit down on the chair and Go you ahead. check out the side? Sure. There's, I just there. met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not a useful tool. That's Douglas. <laughs> I look just like Douglas. <laughs> Before we really get super far, do we need healing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Short rest for sure. Okay, no, I can we cast, can't short rest. I can cast my healing spirit as a third level spell now. So Whoa. it's 2d6 instead. Oh, wow. Holy moly. So we'd have to kind so of rotate be, in there? It'd be 20d6 total, which is nice. <sighs> Just you always have to do it in pairs. Right. That sounds so good to me. So four of us. So let's each take two. And whoever needs it the most after will suss out. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Say thanks to town. Thank and you, it, town. Town disappears. I miss you. He winks. Oh, that's weird. He never <laughs> did that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. If we want to get completely bonkers, my new spell maximizes any healing you would receive. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, that seems good. Let's get turned. But I, I think we'll save that for later. Oh, it, it is a high level spell, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm okay right now. So we're not taking a short rest, though. No, I don't think okay. so. Okay, so let's head out. You guys are leaving this room? No. For now. I want to get what? in that chair. Yeah. So bad. Yeah. So who's getting in the chair? Those two guys. So we're going to rock, paper, scissors for it? Hell yeah. Let's spend 10 minutes not tying <laughs> each other again. All right. Ready? I go look at the door. Ah, <laughs> uh, more gets the chair. I change shape to look like Lee that looks like a goat and yeah. jump into the chair. Okay, as you jump into the chair, the sphere <laughs> swirls close <laughs> on top of you. The rest of you see this golden sphere shut. Mm-hmm. More, you're inside. There's these controls that pop up around you, like these little levers and stuff like that. You can see through the inside of the sphere. It's like it's become crystal from your view, and you can see the rest of them standing out there, like all <laughs> waving forward at you. Just like look on their face. No, oh, this is, he's not coming back. No. <laughs> He yeah, was, yeah, you found me in a trap, and now you're going to leave me in a this trap. Is, this is how he ended up in the mirror trap the first time. <laughs> I went in the mirror. What do you, what do, you do? Uh, I pull a lever. Before he does that, I'm going to run over to the door. <laughs> more, more pulls on a lever, mm-hmm. and you, right away the rings and outer orbs start to swirl around it and start to change position. And then one of the orbs that you believe represents Toriel, the moon, shatters open. Whoa. And we'll see you in two weeks. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, number one way is to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Furthermore, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share our new episodes on social media. Visit the House of Bob merch website on Etsy for House of Bob zines, dice, trays, art, prints, and more. And by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. The House of Bob podcast is made possible thanks to all of our fantastic Patreon supporters including Jessica, Kieran Duffy, Mike from the Tales of the Glass Guarded World podcast, Sylvia Douglas, Luke Conroy, and Folt. If you'd like to support us, head over to patreon.com slash the house of Bob. This is not for me, it's for them. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) What an asshole. (laughs) 